What is going on everybody? It's Mike from Sunny Slope Homestead. Today, we're gonna be going over a lot of things today. First, we're gonna go and batten down the hatches because we've got a big, huge storm rolling in. Uh, you guys from Oklahoma, the tropical storm that went through you just a couple days ago is up here now. So we're gonna go batten down the hatches for that. They're expecting 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, continue 30 mile per hour gusts, couple tornadoes. I don't know how they predict a couple uh, tornadoes. I mean, seriously. But we gotta go around the homestead here and we gotta start locking stuff up. We're gonna check out those plants that we did under the Cog Hill Glow uh, Grow Light method from those uh, lights that you got from Walmart. We're gonna check those out. I've been meaning to do an update on that forever. Just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, I really didn't think they were going to survive. Uh, one thing being because uh, hardening them off has been really complicated. It has nothing to do with the seeds, the light, anything. It's all me. Uh, but they're pulling through. Hope you guys follow along. Whew, it's hotter than fish grease out guys I'm telling you the sun's out guns out you wouldn't think a storm's coming but there's one brewing trust me let me show you these potato plants that uh we got going here I have never grown potatoes in my life I did two different things organic dirt miracle grow dirt I'm thinking the organic is really kicking butt now I the reason why we did two different dirts because I had organic dirt left over from seeding projects. They didn't seed very well in the organic dirt. When I started over and did the organic, uh, well, I did the, sorry, the Miracle Grow dirt, I got really good seed results, but they're not producing plants. I don't know why I put some potassium in this dirt, but there's definitely a difference between the two. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, I got some asparagus I gotta get planted. Man, I gotta get that stuff planted. I don't know where I'm gonna put it because it has to be long term. It has to be in a place that I'm gonna be able to take care of and I'm not gonna mess with so it can root out. But check out the strawberries, guys. I put this little net thing around it. I got it at a local tractor supply and it has just been kicking butt with no pressure from the rabbits eating things off of it. I'm a little behind in getting anything in the raised beds. I know. It's like June, trust me, I know, I know. But we got a couple tomato plants in, we got some onions in, but let's go check on these uh, cucumbers, Bella Rosa plants and mortgage tomatoes that we planted underneath the grow lights that Cog Hill suggested over on his channel. Check it out. These things are kicking butt, man. Look at these guys, they're growing huge. Now, they're not Bonnie's, trust me. I'm just a guy that never throws anything away. So whenever I do buy plants, I save these trays, I save the cartons to go in so I can you reutilize them when I seed stuff. But these cucumber plants have just been kicking butt. Uh, they do droop, I'm hardening them off right now, but they do droop down in the, well I would say mid afternoon, but uh, we just add a little water, keep them cool and they bounce back. I've had an extremely tough time hardening these things off, guys. It has been a pain in the butt, but I think they finally have reached to the point where I can start putting them in the ground. We have a storm coming in. They're not gonna sit out their first night in the ground, going through a hail storm, high winds, not gonna have it. But I just wanna say, we planted another set of everything, because that first set, it just wasn't working out. I don't know what it was, it was, um, I think it was me. I planted some seeds too different or too deep. And then when they came up, it took forever for them to come up. Cucumbers came up first, but it took forever for the tomatoes to come up. So I started another set thinking maybe I just got, I did something wrong. And now I got double the plants and they've all caught up pretty fast, but I gotta get these in the ground people. But the light method, it works. Next year, we're gonna put them uh, hanging from the ceiling. I'm not gonna do the whole bookshelf book thing that was kind of pain in the butt so we're going to chain them from the ceiling so all right now let's go check out these goats meh meh i love talking to these guys 
Me. <laughs> you guys are hoot. So. Me. All right. So this area right here. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll I'll get to you guys in a second. This area right here is an area that has a lot of tree stumps I haven't gotten out yet. Oh my gosh. There are a lot of tree stumps and stuff. Are you guys done? Guess not. All right. This area right here, a lot of tree stumps. I can't necessarily mow back here the, the greatest, especially with my new Kubota. I don't want to damage anything by hitting a gnarly stump. So <laughs> I put up some chicken netting fencing that I had, and I've just been letting the goats work this over. You guys, check out the damage they've been doing over here. The area we put the goat pin in typically looks like this during uh, the summer months. Well, with us and the goats, this is what it looks like now. These guys have been doing an awesome job at keeping stuff down. Look at that. They just get right up there. They get all that foliage out. They really have not attacked the grass yet because we all know that they're browsers and not grazers, but they've been doing an awesome job at clearing this all out. And eventually, when we get uh, our next project going, this is gonna be our next area that we'll fence in. And then those guys will rotate them back and forth. You guys keep it down. You guys sure are loud today. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you guys. Look at you guys. Hey, so there's going to be a storm coming in. I need you guys to get prepared. Don't be scared, Mama. You take care of these kids because this is going to be the first storm they went through. And I don't need them getting freaked out and busting the fence all up or tearing everything up. <laughs> yeah, are you sure are talkative today? You just gotta grow some back tail feathers and you might look normal again. Huh. <laughs> Sorry, sensitive subject, I get it. I... Okay, I apologize. I won't mention your tail feathers no more. No reason to scream at me. Lord, drama queen. You guys stay chill and everything is gonna be okay. Let's go check out these meat birds. Look at them blue skies. Little do we know, we're only about an hour away from complete hell breaking loose here. I don't know if you can see this or not. I don't think my wide angle lens can get it, but there's some stuff brewing in the distance. It is a brewing. You know what's going to happen, right? It's going to be this big, bad storm. And it's going to come in here. And it's just going to sprinkle a little bit. No wind, no nothing. We can only hope. But I got some bad news. Bad news is the turkeys didn't make it, guys. Yep. The turkeys didn't make it. What has happened is... A raccoon had found its way into my fortress. Even though I had a ton of chicken netting up and that sucker was juiced up on a 30 mile 12 volt cattle fence, they found a way. And I think this is how they got in. It's not there anymore. But up there, there was branches that overhang over and they kind of made contact with these little trees over here. And I think what they did is they climbed up the tree and they bent the little tree over, bent the little tree over, and then jumped on the other ones. Raccoon came and just bit the throats out of all my turkeys. Didn't eat, didn't, didn't eat anything, just complete waste. That's why I hate the animals. I'm a firm believer in you grow some, because you're gonna lose some. But when you get a critter that just takes and murders everything you have, that has to be dealt with. So pretty much, pretty much right now, I am done trapping raccoons. It is come to the point where I'm gonna have somebody come in here and just remove them all.
So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that, but it's gonna happen. And the protective measures I've taken is obviously I trimmed up those trees. I, I concentrated my area where I'm raising these chickens so it's not so spread out to give them more opportunities for a raccoon to find a, a hole in my plan or my area. And then I started firing up this guy right here. We're just leaving this on all night long on talk radio. It's Christian talk radio because these raccoons are literally just killing for fun and they need some Jesus, okay? So it's Christian talk radio. You hear me raccoons? Y'all need some Jesus. Jesus, you need some. You come in and just kill animals for fun. That ain't cool, man, that ain't cool. Y'all need Jesus. Our meat birds, they're out and about. They're mingling, they're having fun, and they are loving life. So we've been averaging probably about 90 degree days, and I swear, these chickens have been going through this seven ga gallons of water oh, a day, easy. 50 birds, well, 49, we lost one, that happens. It just didn't make it. Uh, they're burning through this pretty fast, pretty fast they were burning through this. But now that I've got them out here, free ranging now, not free ranging, just out and about, not chapped in that coop, their water consumption is going down because it was pretty hot in there. Even though I got pretty well ventilated, it was still getting pretty warm. We got the sides all opened up on this and they're getting plenty of ventilation. But tonight, whew, like I said, it's hotter than fish grease out here. So, man, and the wind died down too, so it makes it real bearable. But tonight, I've got to shut these down close the windows I gotta get the shock rehooked up on my door get that closed we're not leaving any of this open for the wind to tear it all apart so guys you're gonna have to sleep in tonight all right there's gonna be a storm coming in and I'm gonna need you to go inside I'm no I know you guys just got outside and you're like man we love it but I have to lock you inside so just let you know you guys are going inside tonight so these chickens they were our six week chickens we're on week four right now i don't think these chickens are going to be ready in two weeks can you guys see these chickens being ready in two weeks maybe maybe i don't see it i'm so tempted to call dumpkins and say hey man i gotta push this processing date but the problem is that's the only date that they had otherwise i would have waited a little bit longer I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't process 50 meat birds. I mean, if I have to, I will. It's not that I can't, I really don't want to. I'm gonna have to recruit some children if we do. Don't have a feather, I don't have the tools to do it. It'll have to be done the old fashioned way with a boiling pot of water and just doing it old school. All right, let's get this thing buttoned up. Chill out, you spazzes. Good Lord. We'll leave some of this stuff open. We'll leave these windows open to crack so they can get some ventilation. Now, rooftop eaves, they are open, but we won't seal this thing completely up 100% because we do want them to get a little bit of ventilation. And when the storm gets closer to rolling through, they'll probably naturally get in here or underneath here. But I main thing, I don't want to leave these open and I don't want to leave that door unattended. She's not square anymore, if you're wondering that. Come on, let's go to bed. Come on, let's go to bed. Let's go to bed, guys. It's like herding cats. Come on. Is this where the party's at? Oh, look at this little guy. Woo! You ain't growing for nothing, are you? We might just have to keep that little one around. He, uh, he don't seem to be growing for nothing. Oh. <sighs> Now we just gotta get this radio on. Aaron in Jackson, Mississippi, you got a question for Tim? There we go. Hi, Mr. Staple, good afternoon. Yes. I wanted to ask you about the difference between like I said, the Holy Spirit and the 
Old Testament versus the New Testament. Ah. Christian radio. Uh, because, because these raccoons need Jesus. Oh, what the hell? I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. <sighs> if you're wondering why I'm not playing conservative talk radio or something like that, but just think about it. Do you want a bunch of conservative raccoons running around? I don't think so. Well, at least they'd probably want to work for their food and not just take it. But I digress. All that's left now is to see what this storm's going to bring. Because they say it's going to hit about 6 o'clock, 5.30. I think it's about 4 or something now. And the clouds are starting to get a little dark on me up above, you can see. So, I'll be back. I know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to start pouring rain when I got my camera out here. And that's when these chickens are going to want to decide, like, maybe we should go inside. That's exactly what's going to happen. Are they going to go on their own? Are they going to go on their own? There's one. There's two. There's three. We got a rooster left. That's all we got is a rooster, and it's starting to rain now. And there he is. Come on, Junior. No, Junior, come on. Is it, is it the tail feather joke? Was it the tail feather joke? And I bet these guys go back out. Dude, come on. Come on. Let's go inside. Come on. No, no, no. Goats. You're not helping. You're not helping. He's sensitive about his tail feathers, and you guys sit there and make fun of him. He doesn't want to come near you. Yeah. And the three, the three chickens I just got in are out. You guys are chasing the goats away. The goats. I mean chickens. Seriously, this is all I need right now. This is all I need right now. And it's starting to rain. Come on, chickens. Nope. You guys hear that? That means get inside. It's like herding cats, I swear. Oh, man. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you. I really need your support, and now I got more chickens coming out. No, nope, I'm done. I'm done with it. You guys get eaten right... Go ahead, get eaten by raccoons. You guys stand out all night. Don't care. Guys, I'm giving up chickens. Chickens, there are no more. You guys ram, if you ram my pocket that's full of eggs right now, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm done with you guys. You guys, you guys think this is a big joke. But guess what, you ain't getting no sweet feed. You know help me, I know help you. I'm gonna go inside and get these eggs out of my pocket before they break, because I just know it's gonna happen. I'm going to have to go put you guys away because it is now starting to come down rain. And uh, I'll have to come back up here later tonight and put these chickens away. I'm not giving up on chickens. I'm not going to let the raccoons get them. That's just angry talk. That's just stressful, stressful angry mic coming out. So, All right. We'll get some more pictures of this storm or video of this storm. It's just reaching us. I'm kind of interested to see how violent this thing really gets. And I'm going to blame this weather on my wife because today, after, I don't know, a month of not washing our truck, she decided to wash the truck. She angered the gods, the dirty car gods. So I got chicken poo on my hand and I have to uh, go wash my hands. So right back. What do you think about the big bad storm? Think about the big bad storm. We love the storms, huh, Poppy? We love the storms, do we? Yes, we love the storms. Yes, yes, we love them. We love them. Well, we got a break in the rain. I did get the chickens put away. I did get the chickens put away. They put themselves away, but we got a break in the rain. 
Got some fast moving clouds up there. I don't know if we can catch that or not. Well, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Woo! Yeah, we're just gonna have to wait to see. Uh, I think uh, 10 o'clock tonight is when it's really gonna hit. I, at least a lot, when I last checked the radar, 10 o'clock at night was the big stuff. At least it feels way too cool for tornadoes. All right, we'll check back later. It didn't really do much. It was kind of like a huge letdown. Said it was going to come through about 1030 and it just broke up, dissipated and flew right past us. So now they're saying it's probably going to wind up hitting around four in the morning. Well, y'all, I'm not staying up till four in the morning to catch this. radio still made it. I can still hear the gospel word being played down there by the meat chickens. I think we're all good. I don't think there's any danger. Really thought this storm was going to do something, but apparently not, guys. So, I appreciate you guys watching, and I, sorry to disappoint. I really thought it was going to be something bigger than this by the way the radar and how everybody was hyping it up. Crying wolf, I guess, but moving on. I'll see you next time, and I hope you guys subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys.